What's up, YouTube? It's your man, Big Nord, back at it again. I'm about to check out a top 10 list by this YouTube channel, Talk Horror. Uh, I haven't seen it. I've seen this show uh, when I was a youngster. I don't know why I was looking at this show. Uh, Tales from the Crypt. Man, I saw that laughing skeleton. I was like, man, why is that skeleton laughing? He's dead, <laughs> you know? But he has all kind of gruesome stories about, you know, his neighbors in the graveyard, you know. And this uh, show has become, you know, folklore. They did spin-off movies, Tales from the Hood, another spin-off uh, they recently did. Um, I forget the name of it. I believe it's on Netflix or Hulu or something. But this is what started it. Uh, I believe Michael Jackson's Thriller may have started it, to be honest with you. You know, give props to Mike, but this was a, a legendary show. Let's check out their top 10 list. Tales from the Crypt is a series known by 80s babies as a weekly dose of on screen gore, or teasers as a nasty comic magazine filled with short tales of terror and by fresher horror fans as the latest thing M. Night Mixed Bag Shyamalan wants to dredge up for the public. But let's go back to the middle for a bit, to the original TV adaptation. Throughout seven seasons, HBO and producer Robert Zemeckis' Tales from the Crypt shocked audiences with comic-based stories that ranged from side-splitting to heart-rending. And trust me when I say heart-rending. <laughs> <laughs> for all you horror heads who are just I mean, the graphics are, you know, up to date, but the storytelling, you know, is something that we still talk about today. Something that's being redid and redid. Getting into the crypt through the reboot, for those who'd simply desire a trip down memory lane before the scream ear. Let's just say if M. Night wants to succeed at capturing the magic that HBO's tales gave us, he can't be all happy endings as usual. TalkHorror.com presents... 10 darkest episodes of Tale number 10, Four-Sided Triangle. A story of forbidden love between a farmer's pretty female helper and a scarecrow. Aside from that one detail, most of us have probably heard the story before. Disgusted by the farmer's advances and unable to leave on her own, the naive help loses it and turns to a handsome stranger for comfort. And on a dark night, when the farm girl had planned to meet with her lover, the farmer disguises himself as the young man. Mm. Okay, get past the horrors of misinformed consent. How much further is her mind being fractured? What kind of moral blackness is the idea that this fucker just delivered her greatest fantasy and she thinks this is a good thing? That she's gonna welcome this the next time it happens. But we'll leave what actually. And the thing about it, man, I, I read Shakespeare and I, you know, listen to certain words, man. Why every time they're des describing something that's not so positive, it's dark and black and all this other shit, man. It's a little slick, this. I see it, you know what I'm saying? I know y'all program a certain way, but cut it out, man. We have to spoiler alert. This terrifying love story was directed by Tom Holland, famous for Fright Night of 1985 and Child's Play. You're alive! You're really truly alive! <laughs> Tale number nine, The Sacrifice. The Sacrifice, me for love. Is what we're dealing with when an insurance agent is seduced by who he believes to be the woman of his dreams. You're my always right kills his wealthiest client and her husband, and is subsequently blackmailed by his own boss, who had his eye on Gloria for a long time and wants his silence to be paid for by having her. From dusk till dawn, you can have her. Like a trip and you should have asked for that, that bag. You talking about a night with, well I tell you, they, they thinking with the wrong head, man. How far will this agent sink for his beloved? We're guessing you say six feet under. After a setup like this, it'll be a breath of fresh air even to TV snobs to see the unlikely deus ex machina which presumably brings justice in the end. Which is one reason this isn't higher on the list. Tale number eight, Three's a Crowd. A struggling, seemingly impotent, very, very frustrated husband and his understandably jumpy wife are invited to a friend's cabin to celebrate their anniversary. 
The friend happens to be a rich, successful friend of the husband's, who happened to date the wife for a short period and is now more than happy to provide for the couple on their special date, especially the wife. Let's just say M. Night wasn't the first to completely blow us away with a twist that is frankly obvious when put in perspective. And as far as twisted marital relations go on Crypt, this bleak tale is only the tip of the iceberg. Tale number seven, Easel Kilia. While the original story was dreamed up in the 50s and has a cheesy title to match, the TV adaptation of Easel Kilia has a mix of gore and psychological terror that seems more characteristic of 80s indie horror than anything. In it, a struggling artist played by Tim Roth happens upon a secret that breaks him from his art block. A revelation he comes upon when he accidentally drops a flower pot on a drunk heckler he was trying to shut up. His inspiration strikes when he sees the fresh corpse, and soon a nameless buyer is paying him out of his financial hole to get his hands on more. It's like Roger Corman's A Bucket of Blood, only less funny, but that's a good thing. Add in a love interest who would understandably be alienated by the snarling artist's choice of medium, and you've got the formula for more than one despicable choice that ultimately lie out of our so-called hero's hands. Tale number six, Forever Ambergris. Forever Ambergris, a title which is completely lost in adaptation between comic and television, is nonetheless a classic crypt tale of deception between an idealistic photographer and the man he idealizes most. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino gets his cast from old tales from the Crip episodes. Steve Buscemi plays a younger man on the job in his prime with an endlessly supportive girlfriend. I worship Isaac. And a great story on his hands. Roger Daltrey plays his idol, well past his prime and on the same story as a last chance. It's hard to convey the darkness of this piece without outright spoiling the ending. Let's say that when your character damning betrayal involves leaving your colleague away from a tropical war zone, it speaks volumes about the sickness about to ensue. Never, ever meet your heroes, kiddies. Or your replacements. Tale number five, The Kidnapper. For many, the last season of Crypt was a dark spot on a nice, slimy record. But for me, this Season 7 episode is an uncommonly dark entry in the anthology. Why? Three-word horror story. For sale. Baby. To go into detail, Danny is a nice guy, who does a seemingly nice thing. While working in a pawn shop, he falls in love with a homeless woman who he shelters from her abusive husband along with her unborn baby. Danny and Teresa become boyfriend and girlfriend, and soon the kid is born which is when she starts neglecting him in favor of the child. For most guys, this would be a horrific enough ending, but as we stay with the story, Danny falls off the deep end and hires the shadiest agency this side of Quitters, Inc. to help someone kidnap his own kid for cash. A word to the wise, once you involve human trafficking, things don't get any nicer. Tale number mm. four, Abracadaver. During a heated argument over whether the brain or heart contains the key to life, an underachieving medical student named Carl springs a birthday prank on his genius brother and classmate, Marty. As a result, Marty has a heart attack and loses much of the mobility in his operating hand. Years later, Carl has become a successful doctor, and Marty decides to play a little prank of his own, utilizing an experimental serum that mimics death and a whole autopsy lab full of toys. Abracadaver illustrates how badly one joke can go if it involves scaring your weak heart brother I saw this one. sufficiently tested chemicals. I, saw this I could one. say just how far, but that'd require a spoiler alert. Needless to say, Marty's revenge is nothing if not extreme, and the fact that it's being perpetrated on a regretful sibling is just one chilling example of how bad familial relations can go in this series. Case in point, tale number three, Yellow. The longest episode of Tales from the Crypt, and one many consider to be the overall best, is also one of the murkiest and most depressing. Yellow deals with a pacifist and a coward in what is probably the worst situation for either to be in. You've got to do this. Uh, Being a ranking soldier in the trenches during World War I, with his war hawk father acting as his superior. Needless to say, after seeing the fatally wounded bodies of his comrades firsthand, Lieutenant Calthrob isn't exactly itching to run into battle. But it's battle he gets as his father forces him to move on the German line. 
Instead, when he sees the enemy, he retreats, leaving his comrades to be slaughtered without warning. Well, all except for one who scales the beams. The boy's own father puts him up for court martial, death by firing squad for his cowardice, a fate we watch him crack under the pressure of standing up to. That is what I'm really guilty of, isn't it, father? Huh? That the whole world knows that the son of the great General Calfrum is afraid to die! The father and son officers are played by Kirk and Eric Douglas, with Crip veteran Lance Henriksen and Dan Aykroyd rounding out a cast directed by Robert Zemeckis himself. Tale number two, split second. Poor Ted! is actually a reasonably successful young lumberjack who's a John Henry with an axe when his co-workers are using chainsaws, just got a new job, is set to kill at an upcoming logging tournament, and he has the eye of a cute little ex-waitress set upon him. So why poor Ted? The girl is actually now the boss lumberjack's wife just looking for some extra thrills, and the boss is played by a very short-fused Brian James. I want to know which one of you has been fucking my wife. Do we even have to say it ends in tragedy? But this is no mere thrust-thrust-stab affair, and its execution is darker than most. Made no better by the fact that Ted is portrayed as a great guy with a genuine love for his job and his co-workers, as well as a real interest in doing the right thing, at least for a heroic portion of the episode. Add to that a sympathetic antagonist whose one fatal flaw is his jealousy, and a femme fatale whose sin stems from frustration and boredom, That's and you've got a tragic character ensemble that turns what would otherwise be one of the most cathartic endings in Tales canon into a crying shame. Tale number one, The Bribe. The bribe in question is offered to a fire marshal in exchange for failing to report a strip club's violation of code. While we aren't exactly told why the owner can't just use his exorbitant bribe money to bring his club up to standards, the surrealism of the scenario brings a sort of biblical quality to the piece, as our ostensible hero makes deals with more than one human devil in order to come out on top. Unfortunately, his actions, combined with a series of wickedly timed twists, only drive him deeper into a personal hell, leading to one of the most unapologetically cruel endings for a Tales protagonist who doesn't really deserve it. This blackened tale stars Terry O'Quinn from the original The Stepfather, and co-stars Benicio Del Toro. So, what do all you talkers out there think? Are these ten tales bleak enough for ya, or do you say there are still darker areas of the crypt to explore? Leave us your thoughts below, and subscribe if you'd like to hear more from- Bruh, I like number two. Number two seemed like, worth a watch. I only saw one of them. The one where he had his brother hung up in the, um, in the meat locker. Crazy, crazy, sick, sick show. You know, I wouldn't advise kids to watch this type of thing. I don't know why I was a kid watching this, you know, but just classic horror, you know, just in time for Halloween. I didn't give no spoilers. Thankfully, this top 10 didn't give no spoilers. Check it out if you're of age and mature enough to handle such content. Let me give that disclaimer. What do you guys think of this list? Let us know in the comments below. Like and subscribe as well. Brother, she loves that it's off the temple I rap. Midnight gift, titty lips, right on schedule my racks.